Oh, that is really not coming off. Well, that's, this is it. This is the new normal. I just live with this on the back of my hand now. Hey guys, it's Bailey. Welcome back to the channel and thanks for tuning in to a video that is going to be a review of some new eyeshadows from All May, cream shadows from All May. We're not playing with powders today. These are the velvet foil cream shadows that I recently spotted on Ulta during one of the two too many times I've been on to just buy things I don't need. Anywho, found these. And really any time that I see something new from All May, I always do a double take because it doesn't feel like they launch things all that frequently. And so to me, it's kind of one of those drugstore brands that I feel like they're gonna slip something really stellar there under the radar because they have like their long-term collection. Everyone has a favorite or two from the brand, but it just don't, they don't launch things quite like nearly as frequently as all the other drugstore brands. So I had to pick these up. Uh, they retail for $7.99 and I got two shades here, the first of which is Ruby Glam, which I was wearing in a recent video, maybe even the most recent video right before this, where I was reviewing this uh, brush set from Real Techniques, if you wanna go check it out there. And then the other, and that was all I was wearing on my lid in that video, for those of you who are asking about it. And then uh, right now, I am the other shade that I got is what I'm wearing today, and also the only thing I'm wearing on my lid, and it is the shade Paradise Found, which is this really pretty olive green shade. Now, something that intrigued me about these, I mean, beyond the the whole velvet foil thing because to me those just don't work together in my mind but the other thing that struck me is that they say 24 hour wear so I am always all for a one and done product that not only looks good with minimal effort but also lasts throughout the day so nah, I, yeah I was sold. The instructions with these say to apply with your finger and blend thoroughly. Honestly, with pretty much every sort of cream gel product like this that I use on my eyes, I always like to use a brush. In the last video that I did where I was applying the shade Ruby Glam, I used this one from Real Techniques, which is supposed to be used with glitter and slash cream products, and it's just a little bit too big for my eye. So what I actually like to use, I demo two different brushes in this video, the first of which is this one from Pure. It's it's called the Precision Crease Brush, which is kind of like a mini me of this Real Techniques. This is great for packing on the color on the lid itself, but it's not quite fluffy enough to diffuse the shade and the crease like I like. So the brush or brush style that I actually like better is something closer to one of these guys. Basically, it's like a fluffy shader brush where it's flat enough on one end, but still has some thickness to it so that you can get up in your crease and buff and blend. The one I use today is from the e.l.f. Beautifully Precise collection. However, I've also talked about using this one from Real Techniques called the shading brush. So they say to use your fingers, but I just find that it's so much harder to get a really good blend, especially in the crease area with these. So I always go for a brush. Now back to the wear time situation. I didn't test these for 24 hours because that's just not practical for me, but I have worn them for a full day where I'm like out and about walking the dog. I'm not sweating excessively, but I'm not just like sitting inside the whole day. I've exposed it to the elements and I have to say I'm pretty impressed with how these held up. And also point out that it took some work to get them off. I normally cleanse my face and in like rinsing my eye area, I don't apply, apply cleanser directly to my eye area, but you know, in rinsing my cleanser off the rest of my face, a lot of my eye makeup will naturally come off. Typically mascara is the most stubborn and that's what I'm using, you know, makeup remover on a cotton pad to get rid of. Not the case with this stuff. It was all still on there even after I had taken my leftover cleanser and kind of buffed it into my eye area, rinsed it all off. It was like, on my eyelid. You have to have some sort of backup removal system to get these off because they are so stinking long lasting. So 24 hours, I, I don't really know about, but they will certainly last you. The, the one exception to that though, is if you apply it too thick. I found this, especially when I use this brush from Real Techniques that I just, it made for a really uneven application. It's not my favorite brush, but it's in part why tools are everything, especially with these. But what I found in those areas where it just, the product got a little bit too thick across the eye, is it flaked down throughout the day. There was no fading, no creasing, um, no movement across the eye, just the flaking and only in the areas that I had a little bit too much layered on over top because these really do dry down to like a true powdery consistency. They don't stay, they like set very quickly and very solidly. So once they dry down, they are there to stay. And I feel like that finish that they have, I mean, not only contributes to longevity, but it also explains the velvet 
foil combination here. Um, the finish is kind of like a matte base with lots of shimmer in it. And so my inclination with these was to build it up a lot to make those, you know, get more of that shimmer on the lid and make it more of a metallic finish. But I think that's what's going to get you into trouble, especially when it comes to it flaking down your face. If you're interested in something more metallic, I recently reviewed these from a brand called Sydney Grace, which side note, in, for the Alame, it says that you get 10.65 milliliters in one of these guys, and the Sydney Gray says that you get 10, so technically you're getting more in the Alame, but I just don't, I don't know that I believe that. Just as a side note, what do you think? Um, anywho, the main difference between these is the consistency. The lasting power is fantastic on the Sydney Grace as well, but these are far more metallic and more easily layered to be metallic. So if that's what you're after, I would maybe reach for these instead. I think they're also a, a dollar cheaper as well, which is great. That said, if you're looking for something maybe more accessible that you don't have to shop online for, you just want to go in store, pick it up so you can get a good feel for the shade selection, these all may are pretty good. I mean, they are really stepping it up because this is not not what I think of when I typically imagine all may, which is more natural, neutral, like no makeup makeup. And these are the exact opposite of that. And I kind of freaking love it. So those are my thoughts on the velvet foil shadow, a really good option for a cream shadow from the drugstore anyway, and something I recommend you check out if these appeal to you. So yeah, let me know if you have any questions, guys, if I left anything out, let me know down in the comments below, or if you've tried these and have your own thoughts, also let us know in the comments. Besides that, guys, thank you so much for watching. Please don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already, and I will catch you in the next video. Bye guys!